Yes. Hello guys, welcome to KDD Planning Solutions and myself Mohan Rajamani. Today we shall discuss some questions from LTA Mindtree. When we take LTA Mindtree, we have to focus on three major areas. First is your cognitive ability. Like any service companies in LTA Mindtree also, you can expect questions from quantitative aptitude, logical reasoning and verbal ability. And second part is your computer science fundamentals. We can expect questions from the basic software, hardware, computer applications, pseudocode and some snippet kind of coding questions we can expect in computer science fundamentals and everything is multiple choice questions. And the third part is your SWER which is communication assessment. So where your speaking, writing and reading ability will be tested in this communication assessment. So once you clear all these three parts, you will be clearing the first round and you'll be taken to the next round, which is face to face interview. And that may happen in online or offline that depends on the HR decision. So this is all about your LTA mindry interview process and cracking this interview is really simple. If you follow the proper protocol for preparation, my objective for this session is by the end of this video, I have to create confidence for you people to crack LTA mindry and you have to stay connected with me till end of this video. Now, without wasting any time, we shall enter into the first question of this session. Right. So question number one, if five bakers with nine assistants can bake 135 loaves of bread in six days and three bakers with five assistants can bake 75 loaves of bread in four days, find the time in which seven bakers with seven assistants will bake 525 loaves of bread. So this question is related to time and work. So we have discussed sufficient number of questions in time and work. However, let me explain how to solve this problem. So we can call this question as group efficiency questions, right? So here we have set of people working for set of days to complete set of work, right? So we have the different set of people working for different number of days and they are complete, completing different uh, set of work. Now we have this group of people working for the same work or different work and we can call it as grouped efficiency. And for this kind of grouped efficiency question, we will be using the technique called M1 men working for D1 days, working for H1 hours to complete W units of work. And that is equivalent to M2 men working for D2 days, working H2 hours to complete W units of work. So we, we will be using this structure to solve this kind of questions and we can apply the same concept for this problem also. Now we have five bakers with nine assistants. They complete 135 loops of bread, right? So that is our work actually. So these two people, right? I mean, these two set of people are working 130, uh, working together for six days to complete 135 loops of bread. Now, three bakers with five assistants can bake 75 loaves of bread in four days. Both the people are doing the same work. So we can put these values in this formula. So this is not actually a formula. This is a structure and I have explained how this structure came in our time and work playlist, right? Now, if we try to solve it, you will get the efficiency of baker and assistant so we can uh, solve this so in 15th table so we can it will go in five times in 15th table it will go in how many times nine times so in third table two times in third table three times then what else we can cut this also so it's how many times two times okay it's two times now we can multiply this so cross multiply this you get five into five twenty five b plus 45a equal to so you have 3 here right don't forget it 3 into 3 9 9 into 2 18b plus 3 into 5 15 15 into 2 30a now you can take b to one side and a to another side so it is 7b equivalent to minus 15a now we can write b by a s b by a equal to minus 15 by what 7 which means a and b works in the ratio 7 is to minus 15 so assistants are positive efficiency and bakers are negative efficiency so if assistant create bakers point so that is the actual meaning of this ratio now you identified the efficiency of assistant one assistant on one baker now with this we try to solve this problem right so actually with the group given we are trying to find the efficiency of one person right now we have to find how much time it will take for seven bakers and seven assistants to complete to bake 525 loaves of bread. 
So seven bakers and seven assistants have to work for how many days to complete 525 loaves of bread. So these people are doing the same work with these five bakers and nine assistants working for six days to complete 135 loaves of bread or these three bakers and five assistants working for four days to complete 75 units of work because you have to compare this with some equation then only you will be getting the question mark value right now these three bakers and five assistants are working for four days to complete 75 units of work so the same work need to be completed by seven bakers uh, with seven assistants to complete 525 units of work now you know the efficiency of baker and assistant so instead of uh, B, you can put 15 and instead of A, we can substitute A. So 7 into 15, 7 into minus 15, right? So it is 7 into minus 15 plus 7 into 7 divided by 525 into question mark. So for your understanding, I'm writing everything in detail format. So if you understand the concept, you can naturally multiply and solve it, right? So 3 into minus 15 plus 5 into 7 divided by 75 into 4. Is that right? Now we can do it in which table? Uh, okay, uh, let's start from fifth table, right? So it is how many times? One times, five times. And this is one, zero, five times. And you can do it in third table now. So in third table, two times. Uh, okay, uh, three times and five times. In third table, five times. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, now we can do it in seventh table. Now seven into fifteen, we get how much? One not five. One not five plus forty nine. Okay, it is minus one not five plus forty nine. How much we get? So if we solve it, we get six here, and nine minus four, it is fifty six. So it is minus fifty six, right? So it is minus fifty six. So I am writing this here. So it is minus fifty six into question mark divided by seven, and that will be taken to right hand side. Now it is 3 into 15, you get minus 45 and 7, uh, 5 into 7, 49. So it is minus 49, sorry, 5 into 7, 35. So 3 into 15, it is minus 45 and 5 into 7, 35. So if we solve, we get minus 10, right? So it is minus 10 into 4 and you have 7. Please don't forget it, okay? Now we can cancel minus and minus, right? So you, you have to take this minus to right hand side. So if you cancel this minus and minus, and we can cancel this as well, right? So we can do it in seven eights are 56 and you can cancel this as well. So it's two times and you can cancel this. It is five times. Now you are left with question mark equal to five. So what is this question mark? So which is the thing you are supposed to find. So question mark is the seven bakers with seven assistants will complete 525 loaves of bread in five days. So answer for this question is five. I know this question is a little challenging. So I have took the you know model question, which is quite difficult in your LTA mind tree. So I believe you understood the question, right? So you can expect this kind of questions a lot. This will help you to score good marks. Now moving to second question. One bell rings at the interval of 48 minutes and another at an interval of 92 minutes. If they both ring together at 11 a.m., the time when they will next ring together is this. So we have two bells. Both the bells are ringing together at 11 a.m. Now, after how much time? At what time exactly both the bells will ring together? And that is your question. Now, see, your answer lies in LCM, right? See, first bell rings for every 48 minutes. So first, it will ring at 48 minutes. Then 48 plus 48, 96 minutes. Then 96 plus 48. Likewise, this number will increase in multiples of 48. Now, if you take the second bell, the second bell will ring at 92 minutes then 92 plus 92 it is 184 minutes then 184 plus 92 so which is multiple of 92 now you have to find the common intersection so the common intersection of 48 and 92 lies in least common multiple lowest common multiple so we have to take lcm right so you can do, do l division or you can take prime factoring so that is completely your wish but you have to find lcm so 48 so 48 we can write it as 16 into 3 so 16 i can write it as 2 power 4 into 3 now 92 i can write it as what suddenly not uh, okay so it is 2 into 46 so 46 we can write it as what 2 into 23 so in simple it is 2 times 2 2 square into 23 right <clears throat> now it is 2 power 4 into 3 into 23 because the highest power of 2 is 4 and you have 3 here and you have 23 here so 2 power 4 how much we get 16 16 into 3 
it is 48 48 into 23 what is 48 into 23 that is your lcm right so 2 power 4 into 3 into 24 so to find lcm you have to multiply this so 2 power 4 is 16 into 3 48 48 into 23 it is 23 so multiply this 3 8s are 24 carry to 4 3s are 12 uh, 2 8s are 16 12 plus 16 we get 28 plus 2 30 carry over 3 4 2s are 8 plus 3 11 1 1 0 4 so LCM of 48 and 92 is 1104. And again, I have created a separate playlist for number system. So where you can find LCM and HCF concepts. So now for every 1104 minutes, both the bells will ring together. Now first it is ringing at 11 AM, right? So in one hour, we have 60 minutes. So we totally have 1104 minutes. So which will happen after how many minutes? How many hours? So divided by 60. So if we divide this by 60, how much we will get? Uh, it's 1 times 60 and we get 5, 0, 4 and 8 times 8 into 6, 48. So 480 because if we put 9, we get 54, right? So it is 480. Now 10 minus 8, you get 2. So it is 24. So we can write this value in a mixed fraction. Right, so mixed fraction 18, 24 divided by 60. So if you cancel this, we get how much? In 12th table, 2 times. In 12th table, 5 times. So it is 18, 2 by 5 hours. So in 18, 2 by 5 hours, both the bells will again ring together. So what is 2 by 5 hours? So 2 by 5 hours is how many minutes? 2 by 5 into 60. So it's again 24 only, right? So it is 8 hours, 24 minutes. Right, so in 18 hours, 24 minutes, again, the same bells will ring together after 11 a.m., right? So after 11 a.m., see 12 hours after 11 a.m., you get 11 p.m., right? So 12 hours after 11 a.m., you get uh, 11 p.m. Now, again, you have to add in another six hours, right? So it is 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it is 5 o'clock. So 18 hours means 5 o'clock. With that, you have to add in 24 minutes. So it is 5 o'clock, 24 minutes. So by 5, 24 a.m., both the bells will ring together. So that is our answer. I believe you understood, right? Now moving to third question. Question number three. A and B started at same time from X towards Y at the speed of 30 km per hour and 50 km per hour respectively. If the distance X, Y is 150 km and then B after reaching Y starts back towards X immediately. How far from X would A and B meet? Now we have two points X and Y. So it's X and this is Y. X and Y, it is 150 kilometers. Now we have two people starting from the same point. So first person A and second person B. So what is speed of A? It is 30 km per hour. And what is speed of B? 50 km per hour. So B is the fastest person out of this two. So if B speed is 50 km per hour, he will take how much time to reach 150 km? He will take three hours, right? Because his speed is 50 km per hour. In three hours, he will cover 150 kilometers, right? So B have reached this Y in three hours. In three hours, B have reached this Y and he covered 150 kilometers. Now B is here, right? So B is here and he is taking a uh, reverse u-turn right during the same time a would have reached how many kilometers out of 150 because a speed is 30 kilometer per hour right so in three hours a will cover how many kilometers so in one hour 30 kilometers in three hours 90 kilometers so a have covered 90 kilometers so now a is here and b is here and a speed is 30 b speed is 50. now out of 150 kilometers, now A have covered 90 kilometers. Remaining, we have 60 kilometers. Now B is at the starting point. Why? Now A have covered 90 kilometers. Now together, these people have to cover 60 kilometers, right? So both are moving in the opposite direction. When both the people are moving in opposite direction, we have to add the speeds to find the relative speed, right? So when both the people are moving in the same direction, in one hour, A will cover 30 kilometers. In one hour, B will cover 50 kilometers. Together, they will cover 80 kilometers, right? But they have to cover only 60 kilometers, right? So time equal to distance by speed. 
So time equal to distance by speed. So what is the distance this both the people have to cover? 60 km. And what is the relative speed? 30 plus 50. 80 km per hour. Now if you cancel this, you get how much? 3 by 4. So in 3 by 4 hours, both these people will meet at one point. Now our question is how far from X would A and B meet? How far from X would A and B meet? So X is here. Already from X to this point, it is 90 kilometers. Now in 3 by 4 hours, A will cover how many kilometers? In 3 by 4 hours, A will cover how many kilometers? Now A speed is 30 kilometer per hour. So in 3 by 4 hours, 3 by 4 into 30. So if you cut it, how much we get? So 3 into 30, you get 90. So 90 by 2, you get 45. 45 by 2, we get 22.5. Now see, A will cover 22.5 kilometers. Right, so A will cover this 22.5 kilometers in this 3 by 4 hours. 3 by 4 hours. So already A covered 90 kilometers. Now A is covering 22.5 kilometers. So this is with respect to the point X, right? So totally 90 plus 22.5. A have traveled how much distance now? So A has traveled 112.5 kilometers. Now from point X, A and B will meet at 112.5 kilometer distance. So answer for this question is 112.5 kilometer. So you have to detail this questions, right? So you don't have a specific formula, but you have to understand the question. You have to detail every step. Then only you will be getting the answer. I believe you understood this question, right? Now moving to the next question. An article was sold at a profit of 12%. If the cost price would be 10% less and the selling price would be 5.75 more, there would be a profit of 30%. Then at what price it should be sold to make a profit of 20%? So this question is from profit and loss. So in profit and loss, again, we know multiple formulas. So instead of solving the problem with formulas, if you try to understand the concept base, you can easily come up with the answer. An article was sold at a profit of 12%. See, a person is selling the product at a profit of 12%, which means he sold the product of 112%, right? He sold the product as per 112 percent. That is your selling price. Cost price is always 100 percent. But he is selling the product at 12 percent profit, which means he sold the product for 112 percent. If the cost price would be 10 percentage less, instead of purchasing the product for 100 percent, if I purchased it for 10 percentage less, which means if I spend only 90 percentage of the actual cost price, and selling price would be 5.75 more there would be a profit of 30%. Now see, I'm purchasing the product for only 90% of the actual cost price. And I'm selling for 5.75 rupees more comparing to the first case. However, I'm getting a profit of 30%, right? Now here the cost price is 90%. And I'm getting a 30% profit, which means I'm getting a 30% extra from this cost price only. Now what is 30% of 90? So 30% of 90, we get 27, right? Now I am selling for 27% extra. Now what is 27% plus 90? We get 117%. Now see, in first case, I am selling for 112%. In second case, I am selling for 117%. So why this difference? Because of this 5.75 rupees extra, right? So in first case, I am selling for the uh, some price, but I am gaining 12% profit. In second case, I am selling for 5.75 more comparing to the first case. That's the reason I am getting that 5% extra, right? So this 5% extra difference happened because of this 5.75 rupees. Now I have to find at what price I have to sell the product to get 20% profit. Now we try to find the cost price, right? So if you want to find cost price, right, you have to find 100%. If you make a cross multiplication, you will get the answer. So it is 1.15. So 1.15 into 100, you get 115. So this is the actual cost price of the product, right? So the actual cost price is 115. Now, your question is then at what price it should be sold to make a profit of 20%? At what price you have to sell the same 115 rupees product to get 20% profit, right? So in first case, you purchased for 115. Now you have to sell for how many rupees to get 20% profit? Now what is 20% of uh, what? 115? 10% is 11.5. This is 100%. So 10% is 11.5. Then what is 20%? Another 11.5. So if we add it, how much we get? 111, I mean 11.5 plus 11.5, it is 22 plus 1, 23. So I will be getting a 23 rupees extra. So 115 plus 23. So for how many rupees I have to sell? 138 rupees. 
So this should be my selling price to get 20% profit. I believe you understood the questions, right? Okay, now I would like to tell you something. See, we have uh, included our LTM entry preparatory course link in our description. So you can watch the videos in your mobile. And this is a last mile preparatory course. You know, before the EF examination, or two or three days before the EF examination. So if you want to make a practice, this will be definitely helpful for you. So you can watch the complete video set in 10 hours. So this is how we have created and you can watch it in your mobile only. So it is a mobile only application. So you will find it really helpful. So we have created this video for 10 to 12 hours. So this is going to be a helpful content for you. So if you want to purchase it, so we have included the link in our description. Now moving to the next question. If the simple interest on a certain sum of money is 4 by 25 of the sum and the rate percentage equals the number of years, then the rate of interest per annum is dash. Now see, you have to find the simple interest. Actually, you don't want to find simple interest, but let me write the simple interest formula, which is PNR by 100. Now, if you keep the principal as P, now what is your simple interest? So simple interest is 4 by 25 of the sum. So it is 4 by 25 of your principal. And the rate of interest and number of years both are equal. So the rate of interest you can keep it as X and the number of year also you can keep it as X by 100. Now with this you can find the rate of interest. It is very simple, right? So you can cancel principal and principal and you can cancel this also. So it is 4 times and 4 into 4 16 equal to X square. So X square equal to 16 then what is X? So X equal to we get 4. So your rate of interest is 4 percentage. Hope you are clear, right? So rate of interest is also 4% and number of years is also 4%. So that's it. Now moving to next question. Find the sum of series up to the infinity 1, comma 1 by 3, comma 1 by 9, comma 1 by 27, comma 1 by 81 up to infinity. Right? So it is an infinite series. Now look at the relationship between each term and it is progressing in geometric progression. Now if you divide 181 by, I'm sorry, 1 by 81 by 1 by 27, we get how much? 1 by 81 into 27 by 1. So if you cancel it, you get 1 by 3. Now you divide 1 by 27 by 1 by 9, how much you will get? 1 by 27 into 9 by 1. So if you cancel this, you get 1 by 3, which means the series is moving in the ratio of 1 by 3. So in this kind of cases, so how we can find what? the sum of the series. So you want to add everything. So how we can find the sum of series. So this is our question. Now we have formula to deal with this kind of questions. So let me include the formula for you. See, you have to keep the geometric progression and arithmetic progression, uh, sum of series as well as to find the sum of nth term. So this is very important. So let me write the formula for you. Okay. Sum of n term equal to 1 by, sorry, a by 1 minus r a by 1 minus r. So what is the a? So a is always the first term. And what is r? It is the ratio. And you know the ratio is 1 by 3. So sum of n terms of the geometric progression where you want to find the value till infinity, it is a by 1 minus r. So a is 1 and it is 1 minus 1 by 3. So 1 by 3 into 1, 3, 3 minus 1, you get 2. So 2 by 3. So if you reciprocate, you get 3 by 2. So this is sum of the series up to infinity. So answer for this question is 3 by 2, right? So here you have the multiple structures. So if the sum is not up to infinity, you have to use a different structure. So you have to understand everything and you can take it as a homework, right? So moving to the last question of this session. So the last question, find the mean proportion between 9a square b and 25b cube. See, these kind of questions are really important. Finding the mean proportion, finding the third proportion, fourth proportion. So on questions, you can expect, I mean, on ratios topic, you can expect this kind of questions. Now, see, what is the mean proportion? We know uh, the product of extremes equal to product of means. So this is how the ratio will work. Now, see, A is to B equal to C is to D. Is that right? Now, you are supposed to find the mean proportion. So mean proportion means both should be equal. Let's say you will get some structure like this. A is to X is equal to x is to b. So in this case, how you can find the value of x? So a by x equal to x by b. So x square equal to ab. Now here you have a, I'm sorry. Now here you have a and b, right? So x square equal to 
a is 9 a square b into 25 b cube now x square equal to uh yeah 9 into 25 you get 225 and a square and you have b into b cube it is b power 4 now x square equal to this value then what is value of x so 225 see square root of 225 you get 15 and square root of a square you get a and square root of b power 4 you get b square and you have the option 15 a b square if you choose it your answer is wrong because let's say x square equal to 4 then what is value of x it could be plus or minus 4 right so here x square equal to 225 so it is plus or minus 15 so it is a square so it is plus or minus a b power 4 it is plus or minus b b square right so answer is plus or minus so you have to keep it in your mind right so if you choose 15 a square out of uh, you know uh, enthusiasm your answer will go wrong so you have to choose the answer accordingly so answer for this question is 15 a b square so this becomes your answer right i believe yeah this uh, cognitive ability part benefited you in some way so please keep on practicing and if you wish to purchase the course we have included it in our description and followed by this session you will be having some computer fundamentals so that is also going to benefit you so keep watching till end of this video if you find it helpful give a like and share it with students preparing for lta mind reading. thank you people all the very best for your examination Hello guys, welcome back to KRAD Trying Solutions. Today let's see some computer science and computer programming related questions asked in the LTI Mindtree interview. Let's get started. This is the first question. Which of the following programs enables you to calculate numbers related to rows and columns? And the options are spreadsheet program, window program, word program, none of the above. Take 5 seconds to get the answer. Hope you found the answer. If you think option A spreadsheet program is the right answer, then you are correct. The program that enables us to calculate numbers related to rows and columns is spreadsheet program. These programs such as Microsoft Excel, Google Sheets are specifically designed for organizing, calculating and analyzing data in rows and columns. These provide functions and formulas to perform calculations on numerical data arranged in the tabular format. And the other options like window program, uh, this is not a specific type of software, but uh, rather a general term for software running in graphical window environment. The word program, which is uh, very similar to Microsoft Word and are designed for word processing and uh, do not focus on calculations related to rows and columns. So the correct answer for this question is spreadsheet program. I believe you understood this question. Let's go to the next question. This is the second question. What does main tag include? And the options are footer, sidebar, article, header. Take five seconds to find the answer. If you think option C, article is the correct answer, then you are right. This main tag represents the dominant content of the body. It is used to encapsulate the primary content that is directly related to or expands upon the central topic of the document. This element should not contain repeated content such as headers, footers or sidebars. So let's see the options one by one. First option is footer. This represents the footer content of a section or page and it typically contains information about the author, copyright or related links. It is generally not included within the main tag but usually placed outside it or within specific sections. Next one is sidebar. A sidebar is a supplementary content area often placed alongside the main content but not included within the main tag. It typically contains navigation links, additional information or advertisements. Next one is an article. This is the content that aligns with the purpose of the main content, main tag 
element as it represents the self contained piece of content relevant to the central topic of the page the next one is the header tag this represents the introductory content or the navigational aids for the section or the whole page like the footer and the sidebar this is not included within the main tag but it is used to provide the content or the structure so the correct answer for this question is article hope you understood this question let's go to the next question this is the next question if the system's efficiency is measured by the percentage of jobs completed in the minimum average time then which cpu scheduling algorithm is the best choice and the options are sjf rr priority scheduling fcfs take 5 seconds to find the answer i hope you found the answer if you think option a sjf is the correct answer then you are right now let's analyze the options one by one first one is sjf sjf is shortest job first this algorithm schedules job based on the length of the next cpu burst it gives priority to the job with the shortest burst time which minimizes the average waiting time for process as a result sjf tends to achieve the minimum average time for job completion leading to high system efficiency in terms of average turnaround time next one is rr which is round robin this algorithm assigns a fixed time slice to each job in a cyclic order it can lead to higher average waiting time especially for processes with varying burst times because it does not consider the length of the job The next one is priority scheduling. This algorithm schedules job based on the priority which can sometimes lead to longer average waiting times for lower priority process if higher priority process keep on arriving. Next one is FCFS which is first come first serve basis. This algorithm schedules job in the order they occur. it can lead to the conway effect where short jobs wait for long jobs to complete resulting in higher average waiting time so the uh, sgfs is the best choice for minimizing the average time for job completion and improving the system efficiency based on this criteria hope you understood this question let's go to the next question this is the next question triggers are not supported in and the options are delete insert views update take 5 seconds to find the answer hope you found the answer if you think option c views is the correct answer then you are right so let's analyze this In databases triggers a special procedures that automatically execute in response to certain events on a table or a view like when data is inserted updated or deleted there are generally three types of it first one is insert trigger this trigger activates when a new record is added to a table next one is an update trigger this trigger activates when an existing record in the table is modified Next one is a delete trigger. This trigger activates when a record is removed from a table. However, views or virtual tables created by querying data from one or more actual tables. They don't store data themselves. They just display data from the underlying tables. So because views don't store data but instead show data from tables, you can't set up triggers on them. Triggers need to be associated with actual data storage which is why they work with tables but not with views so triggers are not supported in views but they can be used in tables for insertions deletions and updations so the correct answer for this is views hope you understood it let's go to the next question this is the next question what will be the output of the following pseudo code for a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 5 this is the pseudo code and the options are 
सिक्स नाइनटीन फोर्टीन जीरो टेक टेन सेकेंड्स टू सॉल्व दिस सुड कोड Hope you found the answer. If you think option A six is the right answer, then you are correct. So let's solve this. First, we have to execute this function, which is a kind of recursive function, where it has two parameters a and b, and the initial values of a and b are given in the question, which is one and five. So first, we should execute function of one comma five. So we have to check this if condition if this if condition will be satisfied or not so a's value is 1 and b's value is 5 so the binary representation of 1 is 0001 and the binary representation of 5 is 0101 and if you perform and operation for 1 and 5 you're going to get 1 as your answer because if only if both the inputs are one only the output will be one in all of the cases it will result as zero so the resulting value is 0001 which is equal to 1 so if you check this if condition which is uh one should be greater than zero Yes, one is greater than zero, so this condition will be satisfied, and we have to return this, which is one plus function of b minus one, comma e. So b minus one, which is five minus one, four, four comma one. So it returns one plus function of four comma one. Now we should execute this function four comma one. If you check this if condition first. Which is four and one should be greater than zero. So the binary representation of four is zero one double zero, and binary representation of one is triple zero one. And if you perform the and operation for this two, you're going to get a zero, because none of the two values have a uh, one eventually. So you're going to get zero as your reminder. So answer. So if you check this if condition now, is zero greater than zero? No. Zero is equal to zero, so this if condition will not be satisfied, and we have to go to this else loop, and we have to return this a plus b. A's present value is four, and b's present value is one, so four plus one is five. So for this function four comma one, you're going to return five as your answer. But in the question we are given the function one comma five, so for this function one comma five, we are going to return one plus function of four comma one. So one plus five will be written to the function one comma five. So our answer will be six. Hope you understood this question. Let's go to the next question. This is the next question. What will be the output of the following program? And this is the program, and the options are. Four zero four zero, three one three one, four zero three one, three one four zero. Take ten seconds to find the answer. Hope you found the answer. If you think option C is the correct answer, then you are right. So let's see this question. Here we have a main function where they have initialized the value of x is equal to four and y is equal to zero, and they have just declared a z variable. Now here we have a while function which runs when x is greater than or equal to zero. So first let's substitute those values. First, x value is four, so four is greater than or equal to zero. So this if While condition is true, and uh, then we have to check this if condition whether x is equal to y. X value is four and y's value is zero. Four is not equal to zero, so this if condition will not be satisfied. And we have to go to this else loop and we have to print the values of x and y. So the present value of x is four and the present value of y is zero. So we are going to print four and zero onto the console. And after that, we are going to do x minus minus. So we have to post decrement the value of x. So the x value will be three after the execution of x minus minus. And then we have to do 
y plus plus so you have a post increment function here so the present value of y is 0 so if you increment that and after after this um, statement you're going to get the value of y is equal to 1 and now again we have to check this while loops condition whether it will get satisfied or not now the present value of x is 3 so 3 should be greater than or equal to 0 yes 3 is greater than or equal to 0 so this while loops condition is satisfied now we have to check this if condition if x is equal to y x value is 3 and y's value is 1 x is not equal to y because 3 is not equal to 1 so this if condition will not be satisfied and we have to go to this else loop and we have to print this x and y so the present value of x is 3 and present value of y is 1 so we are printing 3 and 1 onto the console and then here we have the uh, statement x minus minus so the present value of th uh, x is 3 so after performing the x minus minus you're going to get x value as 2 and then you have the statement y plus plus and after performing this y plus plus the y's value will become 2 because y's previous value was 1 so now again we have to check this while loops condition whether it will get satisfied or not now here uh, x present value is 2 so 2 should be greater than or equal to 0 yes 2 is greater than or equal to 0 now we have to check this if condition whether it will get satisfied or not x value is 2 and y's value is also 2 so x is equal to y so this if loops condition will be satisfied and you have to break from this loop so you'll break from this whole while loop and uh, the program will be ended there so you're going to print 4031 onto the console because here it, uh, it is printing 40 and here it is printing 31 onto the console in the first two while loops. So our answer is option C 4031. I hope you understood this question. That's all for today. Hope you find this helpful for your learning. Stay connected with us. Keep learning and keep practicing. Thank you.